All right, so this is day three of eight day. This is where eight day and seven day diverge. Um, for seven day, you would do this entire area in one day, which I actually kind of prefer, um, even though it is a little harder. Uh, in eight day, you get all but four of the parts, and then you grow 90 blues so that you can do distant spring in one day on day four. So first we're gonna to wanna to take out uh, 73 reds and 15 yellows, and put five of the reds on that gate to my left. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're gonna go and kill three blow -ons. And the way you kill blow -ons, one, two, three, four, five, is a little finicky. Um, if you, you basically have to stand kind of to the side of where they're facing, and then they'll aggro on you. And as they turn, like right when they turn to look at you, that's when you have to swarm them. And you should be able to kill them before their fire stops. So, just like this. And then we're going to want to kill these sheer goats. And there are four of them. Again, just throw on their heads. And I'm zooming out here deliberately because I don't want to keep this bread bug deloaded for too long. Uh, because if you deload him for too long when he is carrying a little pellet like this, he will actually hit the AI thinks that it's stuck, so it'll bury itself in the ground and respawn at its its little spawn point, uh, which wastes some time. So you just want to keep him on camera for a, at least a little bit if you can. Uh, and then we're gonna go kill this other, uh, this other blowhog. It's also important that you uh, hit uh, the top of the bread bug with at least one Pikmin, because uh, it, it, it takes one Pikmin hit plus dragging him to the onion to kill him. And then it's also important that you have two Pikmin on that, because if there's only one Pikmin on the pellet, then uh, he's strong enough to carry it back to his uh, hideout still. So now if you're feeling confident, uh, you can throw some Pikmin on there to start that moving quicker. And then go attack this guy with slightly less Pikmin. Uh, it can be a little harder, but it's a little faster because the, the far guy that we killed takes a rather long path, so you definitely want to get him started moving quickly, but it's not the end of the world if you can't. It's maybe only like five seconds or something that it saves. Maybe maybe ten. See, this is him here. All right. So now that everyone's here, I have eighty-one. That's what I want. Now uh, we're gonna go over to this bridge and we're gonna start building this bridge after we collect everyone who tripped. Um, it's okay if uh, some of the reds here go into the the nectar, because you don't actually need all of them on the bridge. Uh, you just need most of them. And then we're going to throw the yellows on the ledge to our right, and make sure not to throw them too close to the bridge, or else they'll start trying to build the bridge also. So just throw them kind of far to the right here. And then sometimes these reds forget they're trying to build something, so you have to whistle them to get them on there. And actually, not sometimes, it's every time really. And now we want to grab these 15 bombs. And so the way bombs work in this game, uh, in the in the Wii version, if you throw a bomb Pikmin, you can whistle it, and let me make sure, yeah, you can whistle it, and it'll come back without dropping the bomb. In the GameCube version, if you whistle yellow Pikmin with bombs, after throwing them, uh, they will drop their bomb and come back to you. So if you threw them, you have to touch them to get them back in your party without dropping their bombs. If you just dismiss, you can touch them or or call them and they'll come back without dropping bombs. That's 14, and there is 15, okay. So now we want to head over to the BD at Long Legs area. But first, we need to save this guy who's dripping. But first, we need to distract this Wallywog. So if you can see, uh, there's kind of some dark uh, dirt to my right and some lighter dirt to my left. I want to get that Wallywog to jump right in line, right between those two colors of dirt. And that'll, that'll push him far enough away so that he won't bother us when uh, the Pikmin move the pieces later. So there we go, right along that line, and then move over to the BD area. So this takes six bombs. Uh, 
Do I still have a... Alright, it's so the two more bombs. I accidentally threw an extra bomb there, and because it's around fire, it can be a little dangerous. Alright, so now I'm going to go kill BD Long Legs. And I want between 30 and 40 uh, Pikmin here. I don't want everyone, because if you take everyone, uh, it can get a little, you know, crowded, and it's, it's harder to save them from getting stomped on his legs. So because of the time of day we're coming, uh, if you just walk in, like that in the middle, that activates him, and he won't drop for maybe eight, four, four, four uh, it's probably six seconds. He won't drop. Um, at different times of the day, he drops at different speeds. So I'm just going to go in there to, to activate him so he'll drop, and then I'm going to wait for him to drop, and then I'm going to go in between his legs, and I'm going to just swirl Pikmin right under his body. And Red Pikmin, you actually can't throw high enough to latch onto his body most of the time uh, while, he stop, while he's stomping. But when he stops stomping and sways for a bit, then you can throw reds on him. And also, if he has at least four Pikmin still on him, uh, then you can keep throwing Pikmin on him. So, you know, say he, he spins some off, uh, but you haven't finished throwing everyone, you can still throw some as long as there's at least four on his body. So let's show what that looks like now. All right. And it's RNG how long it takes him to start swaying, so just gotta wait here. Just like that. And it's okay if some die here, because I actually want at least uh, two to die eventually uh, before the blues. So, alright, and I want to throw, I think it's 26 on him, so I should have 11. Uh, no, I think 25 actually. Because I want 40 reds going into this next fight, and I want exactly 40, no more, no less. And there we go. And this is the Puff Steel fight. The reason I want 40 is because the part takes 30 and the actual Puff Steel takes 10. And I want the Puff Steel to take a little while. I don't want it to move very fast uh, for a reason I'll, I'll, I'll talk about later. So the way you kill this guy is you want to flip him over and then throw Pikmin on his body. Uh, when flipping him over, if you don't whistle your Pikmin back, um, they'll try to run under him. And his hitbox is kind of poorly programmed and it'll force some of them under the map and they'll die. So what you want to do is just dismiss your Pikmin next to him, they'll all aggro on him, and then it's just kind of a timing thing you need to get used to, but as he's about to fall, you want to whistle the Pikmin back before he falls, and then throw exactly 30 on his body, and dismiss uh, the other 10 slightly farther away, so that you can use the 30 on his body to pick up the part after he dies, and then the 10 will pick up the Toadstool head. Alright, so now we want to have 10 left in our party after this. There we go, dismiss over here. And then swirl these guys around the part. And almost all of them, there we go. There's 30, and then I will dismiss my other 10 next to that. While I pick up my yellows. And you want to get out of here kind of quickly because of these guys here. There's going to be some sheer grubs. Uh, the Shear Grubs don't activate, um, and, and they stay underground if Olimar isn't near. Uh, so they won't bother the Pikmin passing by. As long as you get out of there fast, I should say. So now we want to throw three bombs at this wall. Exactly three. It takes four to destroy walls like that, but we, we only have three spare bombs, so we come back later for that wall. And then the rest, we have six more bombs we're going to use to destroy this wall up here. So, here we go. There we go, and so we want to put these 10 on that. And you, you notice I only have 10 yellows right now. Some of the yellows latched on to the guard satellite as it passed by. That's fine, because now the guard satellite's right here, and I can pick them up. And I actually want to kill one red, so I'm going to throw one red over there and then grab my yellows. Now the reason I killed that red is I need to have room for 13 blues on the field. Um, that's just how the numbers work out. So I want to have 87 of other types of Pikmin 
on the field before I activate the blue one. And now because I'm a little slow here, after I kill these pellet posies, I'm going to press Y to see where the toadstool is. Alright, so the toadstool is right there. Um, I want to stop it before it gets too far. I want to stop it basically like right here, or maybe a little earlier. Uh, so I'm going to try to get back as it gets here. The other thing though is the yellows. Uh, they're going to pick up this part. And if you have them on screen when they drop off the ledge, they fall off the part. So you kind of have to balance, you know, going to get the mushroom, but also keeping them off screen uh, so they don't fall off of the part. So let me just grab this one. And then throw him on the one pellet there. And once you get a better feel for the timing, you, you, you know, you won't have to go into the Y menu like this to check. Um, but actually, I can see now that the toadstool is about where I want it. So I'm going to whistle all of those reds off of it. And I'm just going to dismiss them right about here. And then before I go up, I'm going to put this one guy on hopefully one of those. Yes, there we go. Cheer grubs. And actually, I just realized I was supposed to pluck these guys. I was supposed to pluck these four uh, instead of moving the reds up there, but that's not not terrible. All right, so now I put the five there, and now that those five are there, uh, you should move and you you should normally get those the 10 reds up to the the top of the hill here because uh, now we're collecting the gravity jumper i think it's called which is that spring-like thing that we saw earlier but never actually collected so we need at least 25 reds for it um 30 is is also good so 27 that's fine i'm gonna walk over this way Watch out for the, the, the flint beetle, sometimes is around there, he can mess you up. But if you just stay far enough to the left, then you're usually okay. And just make sure everyone is on this piece. Alright, 27, and now we grow our other blues. So we're basically done with pieces for the day, and we're only a little over halfway, so we just harvest blues for the rest of the day. Um, I'd say this is maybe one of the... I, I think this is the hardest execution day, to be honest, in 8-day. Um, although the, you do have a fairly wide timing window for it. Um, Distant Spring is kind of the opposite, especially for new players. It's not as hard um, mechanically. But there's a lot more that, you know, if, if, if a little bit goes wrong, it's the, t the, the timing window's tighter, so you can't get everything done by the end of the day. And I want to uh, put everyone on this if I can. There we go. And now that everyone's carrying that, I'm going to go back to base. And I want to carry the space float back to the ship. And I want to get these reds as well. And so now I'm going to want to put 30 reds back. I'm going to want to put them back though after I see the toadstool go into the blue onion. Because uh, if I if I don't wait, uh, then it'll sprout blue sprouts and I'll have to pick them all. So right about now I can just put 30 in here. I'll have 14 left and dismiss the rest of my picture just right about there. And when I see 70 on the field, pull out the other 30, and I want to just grab the rest of these uh, dead enemies over here. Oh my god. Ah, oh, come on. There you go.
And you want to have uh, 90 blues. I don't actually know exactly what the pellet uh, count is, because um, just the enemies that you get here, I don't know if they get you to 90. Um, so I think you do need a couple pellets. But you have plenty of extra blues here to carry them, so that shouldn't be a problem. And it's really rare that none of the, uh, whatever they're called, drop pellets. All right, so now we go back to base and and we wait for all of the food for the blues to go in. And then, oh, there we go. As soon as the last one goes in, I want to put all of my reds and all but ten of my yellows back in the base or back in the onion. So just five. And dismiss your other yellows there. I was a little late, or I was a little early, I should say. There we go. So now we have all 90. So I guess you need probably like three pellets, maybe, um, to get 90 blues. And now we want to flower our blues. It is technically faster to wait and flower them in uh, in distant spring. Um, but that uh, that relies is, uh, relies on RNG, which I don't like to rely on. So there's these two honey wisps that are here that you know you're guaranteed to get nectar from them. So that's my preferred method of doing it. And wait for anyone that's fallen. So here's the first honey wisp. All right, and just try to get as many people as possible on that. And then the second Honey Wisp happens if you go right about there. Ah, oh, come on. And if you don't get all of your blues flowered off that, there's also Nectar here. Uh, so once you have 90 blues flowered, then you can just pause and end the day. And so that is, uh, that is day three for eight day. Um, definitely hard to remember what to do for everything, especially with, you know, going back and forth between Blue Onion. Um, and Beauty Long is hard too, but just keep at it. Uh, you'll get it. And the timing window is not terrible, so it's not the worst uh, to get your first try. All right, now let's move on to day four.